You couldn't pay me a thousand dollars to wear what you're wearing. You right put now. it on, you're gonna die. They got a missing body problem. Leave his bones alone. This is a mystery within a mystery. That's right. Welcome to Mystery Files, where we take a deep dive into cases that span from the creepy to the truly bizarre, <laughs> and everything in between. I'm Shane, and today I'll be forcing my colleague Ryan to hear all about the curious leather man. And in the end, you'll have to decide if this mystery is solved or if it's simply a mystery. warm i am that's yeah i'm slick inside of this thing so. why are you dancing around you try putting on a leather head to toe and you just try to stop wriggling it feels good man i think i am a leather man now you're squeaky for sure why why <laughs> That's just, what we just, do in the leather trade. I, we show I, off our leather, you know. I regret asking. Well, let's dig into the history. Ryan, do you know anything about the leather man? I don't, actually. I've seen the one-liner. He was a guy that walked around in leather for no reason. All Is right. That... See you next week, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's more to that. Sure there is. Well, let's have it. Hmm. What is that smell? It smells candy sweet, but also dark and classic like being at the fun fair with your mother's friend you know uh no i actually actually don't i have no idea what the hell you're talking about oh is that your new cologne oh you're talking about this yes i think that's what i you, was smelling yeah you like this it was this? just that you like the smell of this yeah 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 this is actually my scent bird cologne it's a black orchid by tom ford oh my gosh you Where'd want you some go? yeah psych oh <laughs> I'm just kidding. You right it okay. You <laughs> oh, you actually did it. That's good. It's good. Right? Whoa. That is good. Okay, take it easy. Mm. Take it easy. Mm. Where'd you get that? Scentbird is a monthly perfume subscription box that lets me try a 30 day supply of our new designer fragrances each month for just $17. There's tons of options for everyone. This month, I chose. Black Orchid by Tom Ford. Mm. Guilty Poor Hum by Gucci. And Versace Man Eau Fraiche by Versace. I'm getting sniffs of each one of them and they're, they're very good. Black Orchid, uh, that's perfect for, I would say, off the top of my head, date night. Yeah. It's got a little bit of jasmine, some patchouli, a little floral, a little woody. Mm -hmm. And uh, Guilty Poor Hum, uh, it's fresh, clean, lavender. Sweet and spicy at the same time. I can't wrap my head around it, it's too good. Half the fun is just opening these things. Look yeah. at this. Oh, oh, oh. Magnetic. Oh, uh, look at that. Good. And inside you have this gorgeous little vial where you can read about it, see what it is, right? You can unlock it like that and give it a little spray. Ooh. You want it on you? Oh, that is quite nice. That's really nice. I'm putting it on you. That's fresh. Anyways, use Watcher 8 to get 55% off your first month at Set Bird. It's just a little over $7 for your first month. Available in the USA and Canada. Sorry, everybody else. It, it, can I? Sure, go for Might it. Might I say a big old thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out the links below. I knew you knew who Scentbird was. Now, when the Civil War ended, Southern soldiers were left destitute, as all rotten traitors should be. Their lives decimated by the war, many ended up homeless, causing a tramp problem. That's their words, not mine. Yeah. To combat the growing issue, the government passed tramp laws. That's their terminology, not mine. Uh, that said, if any vagrant stayed in one location for more than three months, the town was responsible for their well-being. Now, towns would force any vagabond to either move to another town or be forced into a jail or workhouse. Some even suggested poisoning or execution as a solution to the rampant problem. Jesus and Christ. I don't agree with that. Just Sounds like you're saying it. a lot of things that I'm starting to think you might you know, agree I, with them. Don't say that. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, these are bad people. So, okay. Yeah, I just read. Good. Take your notes. But for one man. These laws were never enforced, as he had been wandering since before the war, becoming a living legend in the New England towns he visited. New England. Got yes. It. Chowder. 
Didn't clams. Didn't mention oysters, this, baby. Yeah. Well. This man roamed a 365-mile clockwise trip through over 40 towns across southwestern Connecticut and lower New York State that would take him 34 to 36 days. Did he ever stop walking? Was Never it like a Forrest Gump situation? I mean, you know, we'll get into it. He did occasionally take little breaks. You can't just be shitting and walking. I mean, I guess you could, like a horse. Oh, no, he'd stop into towns. You and... ever wish you could do that? Take a shit while walking like a horse? Yeah. Okay, well, I thought it was just me. I, did, I thought that was a weird thing to bring up. Be nice. they, is that why you're wearing all brown? Don't ask too many questions. <laughs> now, nobody knows how long he had been making the pilgrimage, but the first mention of this man was a sighting in Harwinton, Connecticut in 1858. Passing through Danbury, New Fairfield, Watertown, Middletown, and New Canaan, Connecticut, into Westchester, New York, and then back into Connecticut through Danbury before arriving back in New Fairfield. He was so punctual that people could tell the time by his schedule. Not not like, oh, it's three o'clock. That's leather time. But, yeah. you know, the time of year. Oh, I would have a Google Cal alert for leather time. It seemed like he loved two things, walking and leather. Yeah. Can you blame him? Knowing he was in town was easy, as he was always clad head to toe in leather, which gave him his name. Say it with me. Leather the Man. Leather, the, oh. the, the Leather, leather Man. man. Weighing 60 pounds, his suit was completely handmade. His suit weighed 60 pounds? Can you believe it? God damn. It was handmade out of boot tops, stitched with leather straps. What? Boot tops. <laughs> that means nothing. Okay, handmade. I'll write it down. Uh, yep, sure. write it down. Handmade <laughs> out of boot tops. Yes, it weighed 60 pounds, and it was handmade out of boot tops. Over the years, it became so patched and mended that its original texture wasn't visible. Over his shoulders, he carried a large leather sack. His shoes were described as, quote, not unlike those worn by the peasants of Norway and Sweden, though far more cumbersome. His hickory walking stick tipped with a wooden ball was the only item not made from leather he traveled with. Whether it was a torrential downpour or in the blistering heat, the leather man never wore anything else. Do you think he wore leather underwear? Because it also looks like he's wearing a shirt that's clearly not leather either. No, I think that shirt's a very thin leather, maybe like a suede. Hey, you research think? says you, oh, okay. no, maybe you, he wore a, little, a cute little black turtleneck underneath it all. You're, that's just, a, that's describe, you're just describing what you're wearing. And some Adidas. Proceed. Here comes the Leatherman! Children would scream as he came into their town. School would be dismissed as everybody gathered to watch the Leatherman make his way through town. Some towns even deemed it Leatherman Day when it was their turn on his path. Gandalf vibes though, right? What? <laughs> He's got uh, Gandalf vibes. Yeah, because he's got a stick, I guess. Well, but you know, at the beginning of Fellowship, the little hobbits run up to the- Oh here. yeah, okay. <laughs> you know? I guess I could see that. Well, because you're at large. He doesn't seem like a large guy. I don't actually know how tall he was. He does look like he could be an ancestor of mine. You see that in the face, right? No. Something behind those eyes. The people who had the privilege of giving Leatherman a meal were called the Friends of Leatherman. Now, if the leather man regularly chose your house as one of his meals, it was considered a herald of good luck. He ate entire houses? Don't. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> leather man would rarely step inside another's home. Instead, he would eat silently outside. Now, a friend of the leatherman, old James Francis Rogers, wrote what a typical interaction looked like. Quote, soon a quiet, motherly looking lady who has attended to his summons for a quarter of a century opened the door and looked pityingly on the wanderer as he placed his great rough hand upon his lips and muttered the words, eat, eat, eat. She returned laden with dishes which had been thoughtfully laid aside for him. In silence, he ate his meal. Oh, so he didn't say eat, eat, eat the entire time just to, eat, 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 to commence eat, the eating, kind of like, like Cookie Monster. I do like saying eat, eat, eat when I'm hungry. You should, you have the size it, for it. Yeah. Once he finished his meal, he would take the leftovers to one of his many hovels that he built in caves and rock formations on the outskirts of towns. Never chopping down a tree, he would gather broken branches and stones to erect his huts. At any one time, he would have roughly two days worth of food, but, he had a huge appetite that kept him moving from town to town. 
I like this because uh, I would love to live in a little cave. I could see that, specifically a little cave. I'd like to, I'd like to feel very, what very What is your obsession with it. being all curled up and do you want to be small? Is that I what it is? I think I want to be small, yeah. It's like a tall guy thing, right? Have you ever wanted to be big? Or even average sized? <laughs> <laughs> Now, rumors ran rampant that inside some of these huts, he had stored, quote, vast quantities of gold and jewels hidden away in the dark recesses of some cave. When he'd moved to another town, locals often searched his home for his treasures. <laughs> yeah. You know who I think's rich? That guy that walks around all day in leather. I bet you he's hiding something. He's probably got gold. <laughs> Despite the intense curiosity the Leatherman caused, little was known about him. Who was he? Why was he doing this? Now, Ryan, as more answers about Leatherman's life were uncovered, it only led to more questions. Yeah. So, who is the Leatherman? Oh, that was very Willy Wonka. I like Thank that. you. I don't know, who is he? Now, during Leatherman's stop in Milford, a reporter from the New York Morning Journal reportedly spoke to him in French. This would be the first time people would learn something of Leatherman's past. Maybe it wasn't that he spoke in grunts exclusively. He only did that when being spoken to in English. Oui. We oui, indeed. It's like when I visit another country. You just grunt. I would go, hmm. Oh. <laughs> That's a coffee. <laughs> yeah, dude. It looked like one. Sorry. According to the report, Leatherman's name was Rudolf Mossy. Born in Rouen, a small town about 90 miles from Paris, Mossy was a shoemaker. While living in France, he was married, but it was short lived when less than a year later, his wife eloped with a friend fleeing to New York City. Can I do that here? <laughs> in pursuit, Mossy sold his shoe business and set sail to America. It took him three years, but he tracked down the man that had stolen his wife in New Haven. Nice, right near Yale. Oh, uh, that's right, but it was too late, she was dead. How did she die? Well, she had died several months earlier from death. Uh, I don't, I don't know what happened she to her. She got hit by a car or like, I guess it's 1861 at that point. Yeah, that's when the leading cause of death was January. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, but she had lived in other towns with other men. Wow, okay. And we celebrate her for that. Now, the news of this yeah. understandably broke him. He lost all ambition, instead dedicating his life to visiting each place his wife was reported to have lived. This doesn't seem healthy. But! On August 16th, 1884, the Waterbury Daily American published an article which claimed Leatherman was not Rudolf Mossy, but another Frenchman with a tragic love story. Identity 2, Jules Borglay. Fun name. I hope he wins. Now in the 1820s, Jules Borglay was born to a family of lower middle class woodcutters. As Jules got older, he fell in love with Miss Margaret Laurent. Deciding he wanted to marry Margaret, Jules approached her wealthy leather merchant father, who rejected Jules' proposal. Leather merchant father. Mm, interesting. Are the pieces coming together for you? They're starting. They're starting to get a little closer. The tectonic plates this in is, my brain are shifting. You see the, the fine tools that they work with to make beautiful works of art like this? Weird that you referred to a beautiful piece of art when you were uh, gesturing towards your crotch. It's but getting you know, real we're, we're warm gonna... in here. I, at the beginning, it was sort of a joke, but now it's starting to get very, very moist inside of all this. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and he rejected Jules' proposal. Jules then rejected his rejection and begged for another chance. And he was given an opportunity to prove himself by working in the Laurent family leather business. If he could thrive in the job, he would receive Margaret's hand in marriage. As he raised in the ranks, he was tasked with purchasing leather on the open market. In 1855, Jules made a large purchase, but to his horror, after this purchase, the price of leather fell 40% due to a technological advancement that made tanning much cheaper and less labor intensive. <laughs> this is sort of an NFT bro of the time. Yeah, I guess, dude, you know. that's a tough break. His lack of knowledge on what was happening in their industry ruined the Larone's leather firm, which is honestly pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> a marriage to Margaret was out of the question. Ashamed to return to his home, Jules became a drifter in Lyon, France. Now nobody knows what actually happened to Jules, except for the fact that a person fitting his description showed up in Harwinton, Connecticut in 1862, clad in, you guessed it, leather. All right. 
right, okay. I mean, that doesn't exactly line up with the first sighting of the Leatherman. I feel like if he shows up in Connecticut looking like you, people are gonna notice over the course of four years. That's a weird gap to account for. Maybe it took time. Something happens once, you think, well, that's weird. Happens again 36 days later, you're like, hmm, odd. I'm gonna take notice at least after the first three cycles. Would you throw crab apples at him? No, because I'm not nasty, but I'm sure you would. That was a test. I just wanted to make sure you wouldn't. Please don't ever do that to me if you see me in this outfit again, because I'm gonna be wearing this quite a bit from now on. Well, I never made any promises about you. I hope you're ready for Identity 3. Well, I'm ready. e -Zek. What? Which sort of sounds like a is that one of the vaping Elon, brand. Is that one of Elon Musk's kids? <laughs> no, that's good. That's good too. Now on April 2nd, 1885, James Francis Rogers saw Leatherman coming down the road. Now as Leatherman waited for a meal, Rogers sat beside him, making another attempt to strike up a conversation. This time, it worked better than normal. Leathery, Rogers began. Will you please tell me your name? Yes, it is Ezek, grunted Leatherman. Grilling him with questions while receiving a series of short one to two word answers, mostly yeses and noes, Rogers uncovered more directly from Leatherman than almost anybody else. According to Rogers. According to Rogers. He discovered that Leatherman was from France, but never wished to return. Ezek had been tramping for 27 years and was currently 68 years old. A zaddy, if you will. A leather man had built his leather suit a long time ago, but refused to ever take it off to live like a normal person. Now, during their conversation, Leatherman took out an old French prayer book and a rosary, bowing his head in reverence. At that moment, Rogers realized that Leatherman was a religious monomaniac who was, quote, living a life of terrible penance. Even after so many revelations, the only thing that people were sure of was that Leatherman was a Frenchman, walked the same path every month, and, of course, wore leather. Isaac. Isaac, which, if he's French, I guess it could be Isaac? Yeah, I was about to say he could be Isaac. saying some sort Isaac. of like name with a an accent. Tell me more about Isaac. That's it. That's oh, that's all there is to say about Isaac. Might have been his name. But if it's correct, it doesn't help us any more than where we were in the beginning, because it's like Isaac, that's clearly not his like actual name. We oui. <laughs> eat, eat, eat. <laughs> I'm gonna become a historical Leatherman reenactor after this. Yeah, and, dude, so I'm just eat. practicing. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yes, yes. Eat, eat. Huh. I think you got a you got a career in it. Eat, eat. Now, in March of 1889, a carpenter from the town of Mount Pleasant named Henry Miller was on a walk with his wife. As they went about their Sunday, she told Henry that she'd like to go visit one of Leatherman's retreats, and Miller took her to it. Peeking their head in, Leatherman was asleep. They got closer. Leatherman's hair and beard were matted with blood. His face was swollen and distorted. Old Leathery was dead. Why was his face covered? Did he get beat to death? Well, let me tell you. His body was taken to Sing Sing, where Joel D. Madden, MD, and Charles S. Collins, MD, testified, quote, the immediate cause of his death is blood poisoning. It resulted from lupus, which had made frightful ravages in his mouth, almost destroying the lower jaw, and so affected the throat that for a long time before his death ensued, it must have been impossible to swallow anything but liquids. He most likely had been dead for at least three or four days when he was found. Now, huh. this is just a personal theory, but it seems in a lot of photos he is covering his mouth. You notice that? Yeah, and I also wonder now, maybe that's why he didn't want to go in anybody's houses, because he feared he was contagious? That's possible. He could have just been being a sweetie. You know, that makes total sense why he looks so grumpy in some of those other photos. Yeah. If I could only eat liquids, I'd be very grumpy. That would rule out popcorn, in which case... What's the point? What's the point? Now, upon his death, the Waterbury Daily American retracted their story, claiming he was Jules Bourglay. Furthermore, there has never been any supporting evidence to definitively say what his identity was. On his death certificate, his identity is listed as unknown. Kind of cool. That's kind of baller. Go out that way. Yeah. Who's this? He's dead. I don't know. We got nothing. <laughs> Now, at the White and Dorsey undertaking rooms, his body was visited by hundreds of people from miles and miles around until he was buried in the paupers section of Sparta Cemetery. Initially, his final resting place was marked only with a metal pipe. Eventually, it was replaced with a tombstone that read, quote, Final resting place of Jules Bourglet of Lyon, France. The Leather Man. So, sort of incorrect. Just a blatant lie. It's fanfic. Sure. I mean, you could just scratch that out and be like, final resting place of the leather man. Old leathery. What a guy. 
Dead. Would you go visit Crossing him in the morgue? Set. Check it out. They said hundreds of people came. No. You I don't. get a sniff of that leather? No, I don't really have. That's one of the things that I would love because leather is a, a rich scent to begin with, but to just give this leather man a hug, that's got to have a nice, nice funk to it. No, it's, I don't. I wouldn't describe it as a pleasure. Pretty sort horrendous. of a unique experience, though. Put it this way I wouldn't want to smell the leather you're wearing. Give right me a hug. Now. No. Give me a hug. Smell the leather. I'll give you a hug after you take off that. Well, after you take that getup off and then put something else on, then I'll give you a hug. I had you're, to clarify. You're missing your chance. Now the locals' fascination with Leatherman only intensified upon his death, as hundreds visited his cave in the sawmill woods, hunting for his treasure. Idiots. <laughs> People believed that this had to be his headquarters. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, the woods. Yeah, sure. Now on one Saturday night, a farmer by the name of Sorrel headed into the woods in search of the money. He returned just after midnight, terrified. Sora claims that while he was leaving the cave, his torch went out. With no matches on him, Sorrel felt his way out of the cave. To his horror, a pile of dry sticks lit on fire. It was the Leatherman. Leatherman bellowed for him to leave, and Sorrel ran the rest of the way home. Wait, was it like as a ghost? Was there a Leatherman ghost? I don't know, Ryan. Or there was it just a guy in the cave? <laughs> this is what he said happened. Okay. <laughs> now to make sense of it, he deduced the Leatherman must have a double. What do you think of that? I think it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> sort of a unique fella. Yeah, now I don't know about you that. You can see two of those. Either. No, no, no. In 2011, the Ossining Historical Society Museum petitioned to move his body to a safer location and give him a headstone that removed the incorrect name. Now a plan was put into place that while the body was being relocated, DNA samples would be taken to determine his home country. To middle school history teacher Don Johnson, this went against everything Leatherman stood for. He said, quote, 30 years, 100,000 miles, never telling anybody who he was. That legacy to me should speak to us today as do we want to respect him and memorialize him properly? Then leave him alone. Leave his bones alone. I guess that's true if he didn't want to be known. However, it's, it is a mystery. That's a nice mystery. And we do love a good mystery over here. The thinking is like if during his life he was like, I don't want to tell you about myself then maybe we should respect his wishes and leave him be. So maybe this very episode of this show <laughs> is immoral, and we will rot in hell for this. Now in the face of protest, the project moved forward. For two days, a team exhumed Leatherman's grave, but when they completed their dig, all they found were nails in the outline of where the coffin once was. Oh shit. Uh-oh. They got a missing body problem. We got a mystery afoot. Did they find claw marks on the inside of the... Yes. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Oh, fuck, that would've been crazy. <laughs> you eat it right up, don't you? No, I would've loved it. Well, now what they did is they sifted through the soil in hopes of finding any remains that could be from Leatherman, but there was nothing. What the? Pretty cool. What was that? David Blaine type stuff. Yeah, right? I was about to say, what kind of funeral was that? I'm guessing that open casket. He gone. The <laughs> Leatherman saved one final trick. It'd be funny if they exhumed him and there was a 150 year old Leatherman peering behind an oak tree going, <laughs> <laughs> where had the Leatherman gone? Now it's time. Let us away to the corkboard for the theories. Fuck yeah, dude. Okay, we're going to the board. We're at the board. Corky Romano. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's nice good. deep cut there. Now, Ryan, we're going to get into the theories, but before we do, based on the copious notes that you've taken, who do you surmise is the Leatherman? I think Rudolph Mossy is out. Yeah. Uh, Jules uh, Bourle, uh, I don't know how to say his name. The timeline doesn't really match up. Four years unaccounted for, don't know about that. Sloppy. Which leads me for Ezek, and that comes from a person who actually knew him. So I'm gonna go with Ezek, which unfortunately leaves us nowhere because we really only have a first name to work off of. Right. But I'm also gonna go with, I believe this one is a mystery. Well, the theories are actually about what happened to the body. I forgot about that. <laughs> Whether or not he's Ezek, the world may never know. But what we also may never know <laughs> is where his body went. This is a mystery within a mystery. That's right. This is the real mystery. So let's get into the theories. Theory one, his body disintegrated. It's not how bones work. 
isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> well, generally, that is not how bodies work, but the soil in the area was incredibly acidic. So many believed that it could have eaten away the entire body. Now, the people that believe this theory point towards the nails being all that was left behind to support this. So hyperacidic soil melted his bones, leaving just nails. Just nails. Why melted was them. Why was there a coffin in the ground? That's a good question. I, for one, also thought about that. Did and you? I was expecting you to ask about that. And now I'm guessing I'm gonna get your prepared answer then. My prepared answer is, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like uh, that soil had it out for him. It could be. What about theory 1.5? What's that? The Leatherman is actually David Copperfield. Not bad. Theory two. The original marker was misplaced. Now I think you're gonna get a kick out of this one. I hope so. Now when Leatherman was buried, he originally had no marker at all. It wasn't until 30 years later that the initial metal pipe, you see that right there? Yeah. Uh, was placed on his resting spot. One night, the daughter of the couple that had found Leatherman dead yeah. decided to show off by bringing friends to where he was buried. So, runs in the family. Yeah, they're a bunch kinda, of weirdos. They're a little weird. Sick and twisted. <laughs> you guys want to have a good night? Pretty I know weird. a spot. Let's go kiss by the Leatherman's body. <laughs> now, when they arrived in Sparta Cemetery, she pointed to a spot. Over there, she said. That's where the leather man was buried. She didn't actually, I'm just sort of. Yeah, you're riffing. A friend hammered the pipe into the spot where she pointed. It was highly likely that she had simply pointed to the wrong place. So she basically just took him there and said, yeah, right there. And then someone grabbed a pipe and went, donk, donk, donk. And the rest of society just went along with That's this right. girl and her pipe thing. Yeah, the girl and the pipe. The girl so the pipe. Did pipe, the, pipe girl, they called her. I'm just confused to how the girl thinking that he's buried by a pipe would have anything to do with them exhuming his body later. It was a pauper's grave, do you recall? A pauper's it, grave. Oh yeah, yeah, but they didn't- A pauper's grave. They didn't mark down where they buried him? Are you telling me the government could be incompetent? I suppose so. I mean- I, gonna, I mean, they clearly did it. They're gonna go all that in trouble to fucking do tests on him. Yeah. Let's move on to theory three. Okay. <laughs> and you're gonna love this one. Okay. <laughs> The Leather Man lived. All right, great, I like this one. This is a happy one. Now, what if the double that Farmer Sorrel saw was the actual Leather Man? Months after the official death of Leather Man, a strange exhibit popped up as part of the Globe Dime Museum in New York City. Okay. Now, they claimed to have the real Leather Man on display. As people would pay to enter, they were greeted with a haggard old man wearing Leather Man's infamous leather suit. Now a lecturer would begin pontificating. We have here on exhibition the greatest living curiosity of the 19th century, the Westchester Leather Man. What the fuck? That's right. He was born near the city of Paris in the year 1688, making him a trifle over 200 years of age. As people would lean in, the lecturer warned them to not step too close. The museum had spent $100,000 to bring him to the city after finding him in a cave, and he was dangerous. In this theory, yes. he's a 200-year-old human Yeah, that they went to a cave and were like, here's $100,000, come sit in our chair. That's right, come sit in our chair. Let and us talk about you to people. He was like, done deal, here's my bank info. Yeah. What do you think of that? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Sure, it's a fun theory. I like that theory. You know what else they got here? What do you got there? Lady swimmers. And I've never seen one of those before. Funny tub races. <laughs> okay, Ryan, now you know everything about the leather man that I know about the leather man. We're both experts. Yeah. Knowing everything you know, what do you think happened to the leather man. I have a lot to consider here. First theory, we have uh, killer dirt that's sentient. <sighs> Body gone. It just completely ignored his coffin. Theory two, uh, we got a, a pipe that's big time wrong. Big pipe. And then we got theory three, where he is a 200 year old Gandalf. But he's clearly there. Yeah, no, they, didn't, they didn't dress up anybody in leather. The leather man is It's there. impossible to dress somebody up in leather and have them sit down. Wait, aren't you dressed up in leather right now, standing in front of me? It's not that easy. Not yes. everybody can pull this off. Clearly. Okay, well, considering all those three theories, that's a lot to think about. Uh, I'm gonna go with this one is a mystery. And you know what? 
Isn't that beautiful? Let it be a mystery. Let it be a mystery. Well, it isn't. What now? Well, this one's a, a bit of a mixed bag. Theory number three has been debunked. What? Yes. He wasn't 200? <laughs> the man was not 200 years old. Was he 150? Let me tell you, and I can see you're excited because you did not see this coming. I didn't. Now, the Globe Dime Museum, operated by Thomas Meehan and James Wilson, was one of the dozens of P.T. Barnum ripoffs that, nice. that had pursued the Leatherman for years. Right before his death, the Globe Dime Museum tried to convince Leatherman to join them, but he refused, mm. obviously. Yeah. What's he going to say? When he died, they purchased his nasty ass suit. Oh, wow. So the, the, the leather itself was legit. Allegedly, the real suit. And they made some other dude slide that bad boy on? Pretty gnarly shit. That's pretty gross. Gross. Yeah. That person deserves $100,000. Like, just how often was this guy showering? Probably never. You couldn't pay me $1,000 to wear what you're wearing you right You put now. it on, you're going to die. Because no, you're going to get something. <laughs> yeah. Now, quickly, they actually abandoned the living leather man, and instead they stuffed his suit, turning it into a static display. That seems better. So I'm going to assume the first guy who put it on as the living leather man died immediately. Passed out. Yeah. yeah. Passed and away. They were like, well, let's just put this on a mannequin from Coles. Now, without Leatherman's body, hope to discover any more about his identity was squashed. The nails were put into a pine box and reburied, along with dirt from the original site. Why not? In a safer area of the graveyard. Yeah, maybe away from that killer dirt. Yeah, exactly. The new resting place continues to be a popular tourist destination with people coming from all around to gaze upon the mystery that entranced New England for decades. All that remains is a gravestone with only two words engraved, the leather man. Without a name or a body, we will let this legendary man be a mystery. He is a mystery man. What are you gonna do? Well, you do what you can, which is buy a full leather outfit and wear it every day of your life to honor him. That's and what I do. Take a long walk in the sun. I can't imagine moving in this. Yeah. I've just been standing here and I'll tell you what, it's swamp ass that I'm never going to forget. It's really, I got to take four showers when I get it's home. It's turning into a swamp river. Yeah. Give me a hug. No. Yeah, you want to give me a hug? No, Smell I this don't. leather. I feel like uh, if I do, there's going to be a mist that comes give out the, of that jacket. Give old Leathery a hug. Let him hear the audio of you hugging me. Come on. Ah, this is so fucking gross. Here we go. Okay. Come on. Give me a nice hug. Yep. Ooh, that's it. Thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Check out the links below and use our code to get 55% off your first month. <laughs> so, God, you're greasy, dude. That's good. Okay, all right, I hated every second of that. All right. <sighs>